This March at Fourth Universalist, we are talking about organizing. Not just what is an organization, but how do we organize to change the world? Uh, we've been looking at this through the lens of uh, organizing social movements, as well as organizing ourselves. What is the history of Fourth Universalist? And for this month's adult education YouTube video, I'm really excited to sit down with Matt Bernico and talk a little bit about his experience uh, as a union organizer. So I hope you stick around and watch the video. I am so excited to once again, in a sense, get to sit down with Matt Bernico. He joined us uh, back in December as part of the Magnificast in Conversation presentation here at Fourth Universalist. And so I'm really excited to get to sit down to talk with Matt today uh, and more of his role as an organizer. Uh, actually, this recording is happening much later in the day of the day that we had to plan it uh, because Matt had organizing come up in the day. He, you know, he sent me an email and said, you know what, like some stuff happened and can I, can I meet a little bit later? So Matt, can you tell us a little bit about the urgent stuff that came up to, for today? Yeah, for sure. Um, oh boy, I feel like urgent stuff comes up every day, but that's, <laughs> that's what it means to fight for the working class, I guess. Um, so let's see, I am based in um, St. Louis, Missouri and um, sort of like the local state politics have been uh, definitely taking up most of my brain space lately. Um, and uh, I heard about uh, a new bill that was, um, well, the, the bill was introduced a few weeks ago, but uh, we found out that this bill got a, uh, a hearing in the house, uh, the local state house. Um, basically the idea behind the bill is that it would um, lower the state minimum wage by around $2. The hearing hasn't taken place yet, so we don't know exactly the amount. Um, which is so jacked up. Um, you know, everyone in the entire country uh, is talking about $15 an hour. That's, that's everyone's thing right now. Um, and <laughs> some, some ding-dongs in the Missouri, uh, the Missouri State House are saying, no, what if we actually lowered it? So um, yeah, anyways, the, some of that's proceeding and uh, had to have some, some big phone calls with folks and, uh, and try to figure out what the plan is going to be going forward. Just uh, a lot to think through. Nothing says you you care for your constituents during a pandemic quite like lowering the minimum wage. I know. I mean, completely. It's it's um it's utterly absurd to do that when when there's so much data to the contrary, right? But what's so wild? I mean, Missouri as a state is <laughs> is bad. It's a rough one. Um, it's got a lot of bad lawmakers, a lot of bad policy, um, a government that's constantly trying to thwart the will of the people. I think, to say the very least. But like, I think what's jacked up is that a lot of the Republican lawmakers who are trying to push these bills um, that would, you know, just destroy workers' lives even more than they already are, they think that they're doing them a favor. You know, they think that they have their best interests at heart, um, but really, I mean, they don't. <laughs> they just uh, they refuse to listen to, you know, um, anyone who isn't uh, isn't giving them millions of dollars. Right. So could you both tell us a little bit about like what exactly the, the role you're in and like the work you kind of do? And then how did you get involved in this union work, organizing work? How did, how, how did this happen? Yeah, for sure. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll, I can just say I work for the Fight for 15 um, as like a national campaign and I work for it in, um, in Missouri and in St. Louis. And uh, I mostly do a lot of like digital organizing and some comms related stuff. Um, so I don't want to speak for the organization itself, but I can tell you all about my own experience within it. Um, yeah, so I, I got started doing that about a year ago. Um, I was an academic. I was uh, teaching comms classes and um, public relations and things like that. Uh, so um, the drift from academia to <laughs> union organizing and, and like freaking labor movement was actually a pretty big one, but uh, it's a place where a lot of my skills fit in. Um, I don't know. I don't really have like a great profound story about how I got here. Um, I was at this institution that was, um, I mean, failing a lot in a lot of different ways, um, really desperately uh, trying to organize people there and kind of get um, some type of, uh, you know, build some type of base of power amongst my colleagues and I. But 
uh, it didn't really work out, <laughs> which is, I think, the case a lot of people end up in. But uh, in doing that, I think I felt that I, I found that I really just liked doing this type of work, kind of like advocacy for other people, um, building power against managers who don't really care about your life, um, things that really motivate me. So um, yeah, I'm, after I left academia altogether, I just thought like, you know, uh, the labor movement was where I really wanted to expend my energies. So that's where I uh, got plugged in at. And so we were talking a little bit about it in our in our preparation talk. What what does digital organizing kind of look like? Well, you know, what a what a uh, what do you feel you're bringing to the table with the, with the efforts that you're doing? You you were it was, you, were, you were talking about it in a really fascinating way uh, in our preparatory conversations. Yeah, I mean, you know, so union organizing um, at at space, you know, you're um, you're an organizer. You're visiting workplaces. You're talking with people, kind of one on one. You're building lists and trying to, you know, um, empower people and train workers to, you know, take power in their workplace. So my job's a little bit different than that. Um, I mean, I, I kind of support the people that are doing that work. And um, the way I do that specifically is I help kind of tell the story of those struggles online. I help tell the stories of like strikes online. I, um, I try to help people see like what's at stake in those organizing spaces. So uh, what, what that looks like is a lot of video production and a lot of like Photoshop and stuff like that, just kind of putting together content that makes, um, makes voices that you might not hear heard. Um, you know, like um, fast food workers, healthcare workers, airport workers, all people with um, historically low wage jobs. Um, and it's sort of my role to um, make sure that their stories get in the front of people's eyes so that politicians hear them so that you know other just regular people hear them um yeah so that's kind of what i'm doing is is trying to sort of raise the consciousness of people who might follow our accounts um, and intervene in the conversations that happen online so that uh people know what these struggles are and what they look like so you know it, it's um i don't want to be too like <laughs> too uh uh, highfalutin about my way of like categorizing storytelling on digital in like digital spaces like on Twitter or something but I legitimately do think it is important to figure out how to tell the stories of like working people online um, just like I mean take the ongoing conversation around the the pro act or around the uh, $15 minimum wage or, or something like that you know for, for our politicians who, people who you know purportedly represented us in Washington um, for them, these conversations are like about political points, about political football. It's about, you know, um, scoring them and furthering certain agendas and making compromises one, one another. But I think what's so important about hearing the stories of workers, people whose lives actually depend on raising the minimum wage a few dollars, um, is that you find out it's actually like people's lives are at stake in, in these fights, right? It's not like um, to people who work at Taco Bell and they make $10.50 an hour, the $15 minimum wage isn't about political process. It's not about any of that. It's about like, can they put food on their family's table? Can they pay their family's rent? You know, can they keep the lights on? That kind of thing. So um, that's what I do is try to make sure that people hear those stories and um, see, see their, um, you know, the, see those people who do that work who are otherwise kind of invisible to us. Oh, I think that's, you know, a really important part of organizing is making sure that uh, not only are we down doing the work in terms of getting to know people and doing that kind of stuff as well, but you know, that that's going to be a little redundant if we can't get that information then out to a broader audience and out to even just other workers. Uh, you know, it, it helps if we can, can tell those stories. I think that's really, uh, I think it's important work. Uh, yeah. so I'm curious, you know, if somebody is kind of interested in getting involved in this kind of work, uh, that, whether formally or maybe just more informally, they, they, they want to get involved in activism. Like, what do you think makes good organizing? Yeah, it's a really great question. Um, I, can't, I can't say that I'm an expert, um, but I definitely have dug into a lot of the people who've written about the topic. Um, and I think I, I think I have some general ideas. So, I mean, you know, it, no matter where you are or like kind of what idea you're organizing around, at the end of the day, organizing is, it's about building power. It's not magic, right? <laughs> like, um, <laughs> I think, I was thinking back to um, the uh, the runoff election in Georgia, 
um, where Warnock and Ossoff got elected. And the, you know, the day after the discourse around this election is, you know, like, thank God for the organizers who put in the work to make sure that these people got elected. And like, you're right, thank God for those people. <laughs> I think that's good. Um, but sometimes like in those conversations, people just throw around the phrase, like we need to organize or we need more organizing or, you know, the only work that you need to do is just get out there and organize. And like, what even is organizing <laughs> given those contexts? And, you know, it's so I'm here to say it's like not magic. Organizing is just basically getting people to do things um, when it comes down to it. It's having conversations with people, um, finding out what they like about the I mean, labor, find what they like about their job, what they don't like about their job, finding out, you know, their connections to their employees, uh, their colleagues and their manager, um, and then like empowering them to do something about it. Um, so it's it's about getting people to do things. It's about getting people specifically to take power in situations. So. In the case of labor, it's about um, finding ways and empowering people to take some power back from their boss. Um, in terms of political organizing, you know, like maybe less labor oriented, it's about taking power away from politicians or making sure politicians listen to our voices. It's, it's finding pieces of leverage that we can use to, uh, you know, get the outcomes that people actually want. Um, so that that's what I think. Um, maybe the, the biggest and most important ideas in organizing are um, just trying to find ways to leverage power in the favor of you and the people you're organizing with. Um, easier said than done, for sure, but that's the big picture, I think. Definitely. So as I mentioned at the beginning, you, you had previously joined us as part of the Magnificast, which is a uh, solidly left uh, podcast about religion. Uh, and so this is a part of your background is having this religious thought background. What kind of motivated you, uh, has that motivated you in moving towards this like uh, organizing work towards uh, union work, advocating for workers? Uh, has faith and religion kind of played a role in, in that for you? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, yeah, I mean, for better and worse sometimes, I suppose. Uh, I grew up, I mean, I think this is something we talked about last time around, um, but grew up in a very sort of conservatively religious household and in, in, in the throes of um, American evangelicalism. And um, in that sort of evangelical culture, I think like everything is a salvation issue. And I, I think that like one of the weird pathologies I, I have never been able to really kick is that social justice um, in, in labor, in, I guess in anything really, is like a salvation issue to me. It's like one of those really important things that uh, if I'm going to really be a Christian, like then I have to engage with um, these struggles for, for human rights, for justice, for you know, the dignity of workers, for the liberation of people. So I, I think so. I mean, um, the Bible has plenty of things to say about liberation. It has plenty to say about work too. I'm a big, I'm a big James 5 person. Uh, in case you don't know about James 5, it's, uh, it's one of the epistles uh, that says, uh, you know, rich people, time to weep and wail because you didn't pay your workers the right amount and uh, good luck getting into heaven is basically the, the gist of it. <laughs> That's my gloss on it. But anyways, yeah, I mean, all that to say, I think so. Um, I, I think I take my religious commitments very seriously and um, they time and time again in all kinds of different iterations and evolutions of those ideas. I think I'm led back to the same sort of um, ideas about social justice and the same motivations for liberation. I think that that is a, a solid place for us to end it here. I think that you, you've given our listeners a lot, to, a lot to chew on, Matt. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down and talk with me and to talk with our community. Yeah, of course, thanks. And thanks as always to all of our listeners. We really do appreciate the likes, the subscribes, the follows, all of that good stuff. It helps get our content out there and visible to more people so that we can make sure that various voices are getting heard. So thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.